Well, it is Tropical Storm Fred. Is it? Yeah, this one's Fred, I think. Yeah. Well, you can see we're about to get it. Ooh, looking nasty. So probably won't be uh, pouring any baits after work today. By the way, coolest shirt you've ever seen. But uh, right now, we're actually just kind of monitoring the storm. So it's about to be lunch break time for me. Um, so if the storm doesn't get any worse than it is now, we might actually do some tropical storm hand pouring uh, because it's really not bad. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you. Yeah, so far, this is it. So a couple days ago, we actually had a flash flood at my house. And you can see my lot basically angles down towards the house, right? We have this little dip in the driveway. And as you can see, it holds a lot of water here, which is why it looks so horrible. I need to get out my pressure washer. We literally had flooding. We had water like an inch from the house. That's why that uh, welcome mat is out of place. It was actually floating around. And so we had to like dig out the side of the uh, driveway to let the water go around the house. They built some ditches uh, to alleviate flooding. So as long as we don't get too much rain, I think we're safe. But right now the storm's looking pretty good. So I think we're gonna pour up some stuff. All right, we are adding to the swim bait mold collection. And uh, it always takes my breath away, a new shiny mold, knowing that before long, they're gonna look like that. They're gonna be nasty and scratched. You know, ugh. Yep, it's gonna happen. But that is the way of the world, so we'll uh, take this out. We don't even need that, of course, but yeah. Beautiful. So we have now increased our six inch molds. Uh, now we have 18 of them. So we'll be able to pour lots of stuff, which uh, I'm always excited about. I love the hand pouring gig. And uh, yeah, so we got, got to get a couple of these out. And um, in this video, I really want to talk, um, really want to talk about temperature. I really want to talk about temperature control because I get questions every single day from um, all of you out there who are starting your hand pouring journey or maybe trying to improve. And you know, I get a lot of questions about how to use this thing. You know, when to turn on the heat, how hot do you get the molds, how long do you leave the heat on? Um, you know, that's such a difficult question to answer. So we're going to kind of um, pour with the new molds in this video and really take an in-depth look at temperature control, how to use temperature to get the best bait that you can possible. So if you'll notice, uh, the heat plate is not the hot plate isn't even plugged in right so i'm not worried about getting my molds hot now uh, what i need to do first is get them clamped up and then we're actually going to pour these on an angle so i'll kind of show you just a little trick it's real basic um, we're basically just going to set up a pitch for the molds to pour the orange bellies first so simple as that we literally took another mold okay and we just clamped them together and set them up on a little bit of an angle. That way, whenever we pour the orange uh, color right there into the um, head portion, it kind of just fills in that throat portion at sort of an angle. Okay, so what we have here is just a little bit of orange with a little bit of small black flake. Okay, that's the uh, little stuff, 0 0.015, okay? And basically, we just want to pour a little bit into the nose and let it just run up the sides just a little bit, just like that. So, there you go. There's exactly how I'm doing that. And the trick here is just to try to get them even, right? You don't wanna pour one that has like a lot more than the other one. You wanna to try to keep them looking about the same. So those two look pretty even. Let's see if we can do <laughs> another one the other day i did this pattern and they came out like perfect so maybe we can get a good result like that again well we're starting to get a little more wind and rain here you can see those trees uh blowing a bit there but uh the water you can see is draining out 
through the side of the house, just like I want it to do. Okay, so right now these molds are cold. Cold molds to me are just whatever the room temperature in your, in your shop is. Uh, here in Florida, some days that's 105 degrees. Um, you know, other times in the winter, it could be, you know, in the mid 20s, even a little bit lower. Um, we actually do have winters here in Tallahassee. So basically, these are cold molds. Now, I want to go ahead and turn on my hot plate. I almost never turn it above 350, okay? So we're going to turn this on to 350. And I'm sure there's different hot plates. They might heat a little bit differently. And one thing to keep in mind is that these cheap pancake griddles, they don't heat evenly. I know mine gets the hottest right here. If I, if I just place one mold right here, it gets hotter than one mold that's over here. That's just the way that mine heats. I think the elements kind of go around the edges a little bit. So <clears throat> what I like to do is I like to clamp the molds together. That way they share the heat and distribute the heat a little bit more evenly between the two. If I left them unclamped and I placed one there and one here and one there with the nuts and bolts in, all three molds are going to heat at a different rate. To me, that's bad for consistency. You're going to have some that get too hot and others that may not bond. So I always recommend clamping the molds. Now, I have not even started preparing the belly plastic, okay? I want to let these heat up for a little bit longer especially when there's this much aluminum on the on the hot plate. I mean, this is a full plate, so to speak. So I put the plastic in for about two and a half minutes, two, ooh, yeah, two minutes, 20 seconds. Those are already getting warm. And so what I think is uh, another important thing to keep in mind is you don't want the molds to reach full temperature. And full temperature to me is when they start being able to boil water, you can, drop some water or even spit on them and pss, they start boiling water. To me, that's what I call full temp. Those molds are done. They're as hot as they need to be. You don't want them that hot when you first start your pour because then your layers won't set up and they'll all just kind of swish wash together. Um, so that's why I pour as they preheat. The entire time I'm pouring is technically all during the preheating phase. Once I'm done topping off the very top layer, boom, they're done. I can shut them off and we're good to go. Yeah, so for this uh, belly color, we're just doing a very, very small amount of white pearl and then just a little bit of that small black flake just for some kind of texture. Not a lot, just a little, a little pepper, a little seasoning. And hopefully the powder doesn't go out during this because then that would be really bad for this whole video because then we could not uh, <laughs> complete the whole thing here. So anyway, I think that'll make a nice belly color. All right, now let's pour some bellies just like we would with any other color. Just want to pour it just to the top of that hook slot insert. So when we were uh, kind of building these AI molds and going through the uh, design process, we chose the we well we did we didn't choose it we made the little hook slot insert there stick up right about to the midpoint where you would want to stop uh stop your your belly color to, to pour a lamb in it so it's it's it works out because you can use that as a visual cue and that way all of your baits come out even you know some don't have deeper or shallower laminates than others they're all right there together and while i'm doing this I'm really paying attention to how the plastic is flowing. If the molds are like way, 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 way too hot, you can kind of tell the way that the plastic flows. This right here looks and feels really good. And I'm pouring this belly plastic right at about conversion temperature, about 350, because I want to pour it hot. That way it flows a little bit more evenly because we want even laminates. So, these molds are currently still on 350. I'll actually back them down here in a few minutes when I feel like it's, it's just so hard to quantify this stuff. There, there's a point where I notice the way that the plastic is behaving in the molds that I'll actually back the heat down. So the middle vein in this color is going to be blue. And so that's just like one drop of blue 
not very saturated and we're gonna put like just the smallest little pinch of blue powder to go with it just to give it a slight powder effect slight little pearl effect and uh, yeah I think that right there will fall nicely so anyway um, yeah I by the way I hope y'all like this color it's a really really uh, good way to do a little orange belly bluegill without making things uh, overly complicated all right now we're gonna pour a few vein colors just show y'all a few of these being poured up and this is where you really don't want to over pour it because you don't want it to go too far down the tail section if that makes sense yeah just like that and now that the molds are really hot what will happen is that plastic will really even itself out and you'll have a smooth transaction of colors between your laminates you can always tell when somebody pulled poured their molds really cold they don't really get that smooth transition of color where the two laminates meet in the tail section well wherever the vein meets meets the other colors in the tail section so really getting your molds hot to begin with is key to being able to pour things evenly however you can get things too hot and then make a horrible mess so you know that's that's why you know i tell beginners not to get discouraged you know this took me a lot of practice and i'm still refining every week every week i'm trying to get better so and just just to show you my point look at how that plastic has evened itself out in the tails very very smooth and to me that's what makes a bait look clean okay so i have all my veins poured you can see these two i poured them a little too far up in the heads uh the back the back six there look just about perfect um so no harm no foul there that's not the worst thing in the world um you know the important thing is none of them spilled over into the tails the molds are really hot they're at full temperature but the plastic is setting up. That's gonna allow me to pour the top layer without any mixing of the two colors going on, but we'll have a nice strong bond. And just for show, ah, uh, well, I spit on the molds. You can see how hot they were. That's even with the temperature back down. So these molds are at full temperature. I could even cut the griddle off. So just to demonstrate how well this stuff holds heat, I, I'm going to shut the whole hot plate off. We still have three minutes left in the microwave for the top layer, plus we have to build the color. These molds are gonna remain hot. So, you know, you can get to a point to where you don't need to heat the whole time. And I think that's important because where you don't wanna be is topping off your molds and then having to let your molds cook for longer. To me, that just adds a lot of time. If you pour the molds kinda think of think of heating them up as like a pyramid right you want the very top of that heat pyramid to be the topping off the mold finished then you can cut the heat off you're not waiting around for the molds to get hot enough they're already hot enough so i don't know that's just a little bit about my thinking but um take that for what it's worth your own process you know through repetition and practice might be different than mine but i get a lot of questions about this and i figured i had all these new molds this would be like the perfect time to revisit some of these uh, temperature and pouring lessons, I guess you could call them. So we'll stop rambling now. So we're about to pour the top color and one trick you can do is actually get close to the molds, not too close of course, and blow really fast, like really fast and see if the plastic jiggles, okay? So if you can blow on the plastic and it still jiggles, it's still probably a little bit too hot and you need to let it set up longer and back your temperature off. Um, I just did that. There's no way for me to really show it on camera, I don't think. Um, but this is good to go. So sometimes, you know, I'll actually get the molds too hot. You know, there again, it's a game of temperatures. Sometimes it's too cold, sometimes it's too hot. But you can kind of learn these little tricks and nuances to where you know that you're pouring the layers when they're supposed to be poured. So if your plastic is still jiggling around, chances are, it's still a little bit too hot back your temperature off let it set up just a little bit more all right let's try to fill just a few of these up on camera for y'all we're pouring out of a larger pyrex cup here because we have more cavities 
normally well I've been used to pouring these six at a time for the longest time now but uh, now we're doing a little bit more so yeah beautiful and and if you look at that you can still see a little bit of that blue through the tail section and that's kind of how I gauge if I got my saturations correct I always want the bait to try to have a little bit of an illusion to it to where you can see through the layers to see the other color layers it kind of plays a little trick on the eye and to me that always makes them look very realistic trying hard not to oversaturate colors because I a lot of a lot of mistakes I made when I started hand pouring was I would mix my colors with injection in mind and particularly these swim baits I really think um, trans transparency is key to making something look natural just my personal opinion so yeah there it is we'll stop there I, I don't want to show you all of these because it takes a while to pour 12 of them but um, yeah looking good looking good and like I said the griddle's already off so we're not going to have to wait around uh, to let these molds keep cooking. They're, they're already done. We're just topping them off. Okay, so we have everything um, poured. Everything's topped off. And these molds are still absolutely scalding hot. However, you want to let them cool as slowly as possible. Don't set them on a big piece of aluminum that's going to draw heat out. I mean, you, you can do that if you really need your baits to uh, cool down faster. But... If you let them cool naturally, those tops will remain flat like that. It's whenever you cool a bait too fast that you get that little dip on that top layer. That's from the plastic contracting because it's cooling down too fast. So I don't want to manipulate this in any way. I just want to let them sit, come back in a half hour. To me, that gives you the best pour possible. Some people try to like purposely over pour the tops of their... Uh, aluminum open pour molds to combat that i think you don't need to do uh such a thing just pour them hot pour them right the first time and you'll have that nice even top that you want every time pouring hot molds the right way the first time is how you get consistently clean pours and that's a journey that we're all on i certainly don't have it perfected but that's how I get the best results for me. So real quick, just wanted to uh, show y'all what I was talking about. You can see how flat the top is there. There's almost no discernible sink, right? I guess in the top. And that is thanks to heat. So, you know, as important as it is to get your temperatures right, to make a clean laminate, to make a strongly bonded bait that's not gonna peel apart at the laminates, it also is key to getting that top looking fresh and flat like you want so just I, I just can't stress it enough hand pouring is as much about mastering heat as it is technical ability and color building all right brand new mold it's never been drummed on here we go drum roll please let's see if this looks any good hopefully it will normally it turns out pretty good but Every pour is different. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yep, just a nice, simple bluegill pattern. And see how the blue, right? See, see, see where the white belly color and the blue and then the top layer just fade into each other. Part of that is not oversaturating your layers so that you can kind of see that little illusion effect there but mainly it's heat. It's hot molds that allow that plastic to, to blend like that. And then earlier, you know, we completely cold poured, uh, you know, the orange throats, right? Nice, seamless um, uh, transition there, right? And that, that's bonded, that, that's not going to peel apart. So, you know, heat, 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 heat is everything. And, um, yeah, it's not a bad color. Yep, 
Yeah, there it is. Nice little orange belly, orange throat, bluegill. Yeah, looking good. And uh, this is a really, really pretty eye. I recommend anybody pick some of these up if you're doing the hand pour thing. Earth eyes from Fish Skull. They're probably the best quality, like mass produced eyes that I can buy in bulk, you know, without going the custom route. Um, yeah, can't say enough about those. And uh, yeah, I think it looks really good on our little bluegill. So anyway, hope y'all have enjoyed the video. Um, you know, please keep the questions coming, guys. You know, I like to help new bait makers. And as I learn new things, I try to pass that information along so that we can all learn together. All right, eyeballs on. And those are now done. Complete, done, ready. And we are out of here. Thank you all for watching The World's Worst Fishing. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Leave me some comments down below. And uh, let me know how you liked today's video. I hope it helped somebody. And um, I appreciate all the questions that I receive about lure making in general and hand pouring. And we all learn together. That's kind of become my thing. As I learn, I try to share the knowledge and pick up knowledge from others as well. So that's what it's all about. Bait making is an incredible community. And uh, I will see all of y'all in the next video. All right, Happy Jack showed up completely unannounced because, well, because he wanted to see the new AR worm. So there it is right there in just a little hyper shift. So he's been wanting this mold for like 20 years and now he has it. So we're going to make some shiny stuff with some of the new dead on flakes. I mean, you can't beat the hologram flakes, can you? Yeah, that's pretty dirty. Isn't that awesome? So, but turquoise. all right. So why don't, oh, oh, camera lens is fogging. So why don't we do like a black or like a June bug color whoa, plastic whoa, wait, 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 wait. and just throw all those flakes in it and you just, just mess me up make a shiny worm. I picked all these out. Yeah. Spent 15 minutes to pick a flake that looked good with this. I unleashed him in the entire bag of dead on flakes. All right, so here's the color that we whooped up with Happy Jack. Go ahead and open that up. Some AR worm here. Just a single solid color, but oh, but it is hot. So that's all some of the new dead on flakes with just a black grape base. So that is the little Barney right there. The little is stuff. Is that actually what it's called? It's literally called Barney. I literally was like, oh, that looks like Barney. Um, and then that black hologram meteor. And then some of the uh, red hologram right there. Or no, yeah. Yeah, red hologram. That red is money. Yeah. Look at that. See, and unlike me, he'll actually go catch fish on these because we'll try. he has time to fish. <laughs>